So I'm being awkward now because <laughs> I'm going to be straight up. I usually have notes and I've been a little just like frazzled. Uh, my so dad good. almost died last week. So that's pretty crazy. What happened? And, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I know I'm like smiling about that. I'm not evil. I swear. It's just like that was really traumatic for me. Um, and then I need to keep moving on with life though. So like he's not dead and he's doing fine. He had a really successful surgery. So um, he's doing great. That's uh, good. That's good. Yeah. And then prior to like him having that issue, uh, I just came back from Thailand. So like I'm like my sleep schedule is all like you, really yeah. crazy and it feels like kind of surreal to be here right now. Makes sense. Makes sense. How was Thailand though? Thailand was cool. Um, I had a lot of fun. Have you guys traveled out of the country yet? Yeah. We did Prague, Vienna, and Armenia. Nice. But Thailand is definitely on our list. Do you have family in Armenia? We do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I have a cousin and like an aunt and uncle. Okay. Do you yeah. guys stay with them when you go? We didn't, though. No. <laughs> they live in like <laughs> like, like the boonies. Like They live in like the oh, villages. Okay. So You're like, too bougie for that. A little bit, yeah. It was my first time there, so I had to like be in the city city, so. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Where it's, like, it's known for its spas. Yeah. Nice. Right? Spas. Yeah, spas. Yeah, spas. Nice. Um, so where are you guys staying at now? Like, We're did you guys buy a house and everything? Yeah, we oh, cool. went to Silmar. Silmar. Yeah, we've oh, been nice. there. That's a nice area. Three years, four years now. Yeah, it's two years. The time time was all off. COVID yeah, fucked COVID, everything up. Did you guys like... Like, how did you guys get that house? Everyone wants to know. Do you remember? <laughs> What's the secret to getting with, a house? With Ed at Enterprise? No. So he was one of my best friends. Okay. During COVID, we were just checking out open houses and stuff. Uh huh. We were just like trying to see if we could maybe afford something. And okay. one of the houses Sorry. that we we were at, um, his, so the the agent who was hosting it was his friend at the same office. So we ended up like. Getting like a side deal going, like, hey, like, what's the number? Like, oh, nice. What number can we hit? So you didn't have to deal with like. There was seventeen offers on the house, like four all cash offers on the house. So oh, like, wow. like we had to like sneak and like, hey, like, what's the bottom like price you could do? And we ended up getting it. Nice. But if we didn't know that connection, we would never got the house. Yeah, good for you. It guys. was crazy. That 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 time was crazy. <laughs> Remember that? That it sounds crazy. Just yeah. getting a house. There was open <laughs> houses. People, there was a line to. View the open house. So it was. Oh bananas. shit! You yeah. guys are lucky. Yeah. Um. Okay. So let's go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay. Go ahead, because I was already starting just like into like other conversations. I'm like, oh wait, we haven't introduced you. Gotcha. Go um. Ahead. My name is Art Arabatian. Um. I am a financial entrepreneur. Um. I have a passion for helping people. Um. Got into this business because. Growing up, I didn't really know how money worked. Um, so I wanted to give back to my community, uh, show them how money actually works, where to put the money, where it grows instead of losing the money and buying useless things with it. So that's been my passion for the past year and a half now. I've always loved finance. I've always loved stocks, money and stuff. So this was the perfect outlet where I could implement both like my financial mind plus helping others while yeah. having fun with them. What's what's your background and um I am Armenian. Um I grew up in Hollywood, born and raised, uh from an immigrant family. My parents knew nothing about money. They put it under the the mattress and it wasn't doing anything for them. So we grew up on section eight housing, on food stamps, so like we're pretty pretty poor growing up. So seeing that I didn't want my kids or like my community going through that anymore. So I wanted to like, you know, make a difference, educate them on where they could be putting the money instead of where they're actually spending it on. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, I don't, don't, don't take this the wrong way, but like, okay, a lot of people do know the stereotypes of Armenian for people. For sure, for sure. Um, and so your wife was just saying like, usually the, f- the flashiest people are the ones with the least mon- amount of money or they're like the most, you know, yeah. in debt, I guess, or they just don't have money. Um, 
Is that true? For sure. Dealing in this <laughs> industry, like we see people are living paycheck to, to paycheck. They, yeah. they may be driving that, that nice car, but they're going. How do they How do they afford that stuff? Priorities. They prioritize that instead of putting or investing it and growing it. They prefer to spend it on those things rather than putting into other things that are going to allow them to grow their asset. Yeah. So. So. And okay, you went to college, right? Yes, I went to CSUN, got uh, my business degree, and minored in marketing. And you minored in marketing? Yep. Okay. And then after that, wait, did you go to Enterprise after you graduated? Uh, I graduated, immediately went to Enterprise. Okay. Yeah. So are you okay with talking about Enterprise? For sure, yeah. Okay. So um, let's talk about our like shared trauma experience with Enterprise. Nice, let's do it. So you were working there for like five years? I was there five years, yeah. Okay. Let's talk about um, the schedule of like enterprise because how many days were you working? How many hours were you working? Did you ever calculate? Over 50 hours a week. That's like fucking crazy. Minimum 50 hours a week. Okay. Minimum. Yeah. And then um, I do want to just say like we never got to take breaks. That was unheard of. Breaks wasn't a thing. Yeah. I remember that girl in on brand she was the manager there and she was like a skinny girl and i went to take a break and she was like alexis what are you doing and i was like i'm taking my 15 and she was like well you need to talk to me before you take your 15 because if something's wrong you need like just talk to me like she made it like a whole like personal emotional thing and it's like all everyone else is on the floor yeah and I was pissed at her anyway. So, yeah, I wanted to take my 15 and she didn't let me. Yeah. As a manager, I, I, I would have a list of who was supposed to go to lunch first. But it, it would get so busy that you would lose track of who is on lunch. Yeah. Who's supposed to go. It's like the fifth hour they're supposed to go on lunch. They're not on lunch. So it's like it was it was a, sh a shit show for sure. Do you have like a story that you remember the most? Like kind of a crazy story? I have so many stories. Yeah. What's your what, what's off the top of your head? The craziest story? Um, one time one of the renters used the car to sell drugs. Oh shit. Yeah. And he came, so he got into an, like, he was high off drugs. No. He, we're calling him trying to get the car back. He's not answering. Saturday, we're about to close. We're about to like lock up. Of course, he pulls up. Car's all smashed up. Damaged. Oh shit. There's a car behind them. He, who he hit earlier. They followed him into our parking lot. So they're yeah. arguing that you hit me. So I'm like, I'm trying to get the car this guy goes into the, it's a, it's a Dodge Ram pickup truck. He goes into the back. There's like a steel pipe. He grabs that. He starts oh, chasing shit. these guys. These guys take That's off. Scary. And I'm like, bro. Like, so I call the cops. Cops show up. Cops didn't, didn't do, do shit. We oh got the car God. back. So he's high up his ass. I don't know what he is on. But um, he's talking to the cops saying, the dolphin's off me. The, the, the dolphin's off me. I'm like, who the fuck's a dolphin? You know, like a dolphin. So apparently he was running drugs. And the guy that he owes money to... It's a dolphin. Uh -huh. So he ended up losing the drugs or using it himself. Oh, and shit. he had to pay back the dolphin and he didn't have. <laughs> he was begging the cops to take him to jail. Cops oh, like, yeah, no, nah, you're, you're on your own. So <laughs> you know, we're not taking you to jail. <laughs> yep. Damn, that's crazy. There is a lot more stories. There's some Do you remember there was this girl? And I know you were there. You and Nate were there. There was this girl that was my friend's sister. And she stole the car. The car went missing for like a while. And Nate was like, he was like, hey, like, do you think you could reach out to your friend um, to like get a hold of his sister? Because she hasn't returned the car. It was like over a month or two that she didn't return the car. She stole the car. And I think, I don't know, I think she crashed it or something. And I just remember you telling me, you're like, don't even give him any information. Don't get involved. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to get yourself into like a mess and don't even just say you don't know your friend anymore. <laughs> yeah, there's so many things that I, that I don't remember that at all. I, I have like weird memory. Like I remember like dumb shit. <laughs> at, bro, I was I was a repo man. I was I was like I was like bankruptcy person. Like I was everybody like there. Like I would call them like, hey, like. Yeah, with my car, you know, like yeah, or where's the payment? Calls. So it's like it was, <laughs> it was, it was fun over there. It, was, it was not fun. I remember like my first couple of months, and I was, I think I was only there for like eight months. Um, I just remember my body being so sore, and like every time I would come home from work, I would just fall asleep and pass out. Like I couldn't do anything else the rest of the day. 
you. That's the biggest reason why I I, I left. Yeah. There was no work that balance. It would just work. It was just work. Yeah. And then on top of that, they like pressured you into going to happy hour and like happy hour. Yeah, like I wasn't happy to be there. <laughs> like I felt obligated to be there because they're like, Oh, you need to go because it makes you look good to like the higher ups or yeah. whatever. Yeah. And I was just like, okay, like here I am. I'm here. I enjoyed drinking, so I I kind of had fun at those yeah. events. But yeah, the more ass you kiss, the more further up the pipeline you get. <laughs> okay, I have to cut this out. Low yeah, key- fire too. Okay, so like low key, he he kind of like messaged me after I got laid off, and he was like, it was like late at night too, and he's like, "What are you doing?" And I was like, hell no. Like, what the fuck? You're so weird. Like, I think. He's done that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Oh One my of God. Our friends used to work on Pisces at the same time, too. Constantly. Yeah. I, I felt so weird because, like, th- at work, he tried to make it seem like he was, like, a father figure <laughs> and, like, he was, like, this, you know, like, I don't know, professional guy that was just so, like, successful and this and that. Yeah, he's, like, full of shit. Mm -hmm. And I don't, like, once I got laid off, that's what happened. He had messaged me twice. The first time he was like, hey, how's it going? Like, he actually seemed, like, genuine. So I was like, oh, you know, just looking for a job. (laughs) And that was during the daytime, so I felt, like, okay, didn't feel weird. (laughs) And then a couple of weeks later, he had messaged me like late at night and he's like, hey, what are you doing or whatever? <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck? Our friend actually went on a brunch date with them. Oh, yeah. God. She was down? Was no. no. It was like three yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know the way he flexed that like business card, the company card, it was yeah. wild. He was like. I don't know. I, I thought it was normal. I think it was normal for that he guy to it, be though, yeah. taking you out to yeah. like lunch and stuff, breakfast. Yeah, he said it was like a manager breakfast or something. Yeah. I was like, okay. He only did that with, with females, honestly. He, he never took me out to, to lunch ever. Crazy. Ever. He was a dick to me, honestly. Really? He was an asshole. What were we talking about before I said off the record? Um, I'm trying to like mesh it well. I forgot. Crazy story at, at Enterprise. <laughs> Hours. What's another crazy story? Um, another crazy story. Um, Your wife is so like good to be here because she's just like smiling I, yeah, and being like, like nodding her head. And sometimes that's all you need. For sure. Honestly, because then you're like, oh, I'm being funny. Or like, oh, I'm I'm doing good. <laughs> when I was a branch manager, another guy came in, Armenian guy. Okay. He obviously he was on drugs. He was on something. I didn't run to him. Wait, quick question. Because I don't know that much about, like, Armenians and stuff. Like, do a lot of them do drugs? Some of the younger ones nowadays, yeah. Oh, okay. It wasn't as prominent as it is Or maybe now. it's not, like, an Armenian thing. Maybe it's just, like, a male thing. It's, yeah, definitely more doing- so men. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's more common now. But okay. uh, he was definitely on drugs. Um, he came back sober, rented to him, whatever. He bought the car back, was fine. He, he came back again, drunk or on something. Like, yeah, I'm not going to rent to you. He went down to the next city. He went to the car. He ended up crashing it. Oh, God. He ended up being in a head-on collision, and he killed himself and oh, somebody shit. else in the car. That's freaking wild. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I looked him up, and it was the same exact guy. Oh, no. He ended up being, like, a friend of a friend, and, yeah. That's sad. It was it's a crazy, crazy story. Yeah, drugs are not good. Especially nowadays where it's like... Oh, prominent. they're like laced with yeah. like fentanyl? Yeah, you think you're getting something, but you're getting towards something different. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's like stuff that you like, you know, you put that life behind you. You yeah. grow out of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Some people don't though. I know, and that's like scary. Yeah. Because then at that point, you're like addicted. Exactly. I and mean, it spirals out of control. Yeah. Okay, so we'll stop talking about Enterprise. <laughs> they don't deserve us. They don't, for sure. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Okay, so what... What was like one of the first things you learned about money? Um, not paying uh, interest. Okay, who so taught you that? I learned it myself. Okay. Um, the more you pay off, the sooner you pay off your your, your credit cards, the better it is. Okay. Uh, there's a, this thing called compound interest. Okay. So you either earn it or you pay it. You earn it over time, your money grows faster, 
if you pay it, you end up paying more faster. So if you're just paying the minimums on the credit card, it's uh-huh. gonna it's gonna take you years to right. pay off that debt. Yeah. So you're, the 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 goal is to pay more than the, the interest that they're charging. One of my bankers had told me, and I don't know if this is true or not, and it probably is like irrelevant, but he had said that when I got my first credit card, he said, uh, just use it for gas and then pay it off. He's like, but let it sit for a while and then pay it off all at once. That doesn't make sense. Does that not make, he was, okay. The goal of a credit card is to to use it daily, but pay it off every month. Yeah. To benefit off of the points and like the perks that the credit card has uh-huh. but paying interest you're not benefiting off it the bank is benefiting off it yeah he was just telling me not to let it get to the point where you're paying interest but mm-hmm. he told me to just pay it towards the end of like the cycle or something yeah. and does that even matter no? um not necessarily as long as yeah, you're, right. you're paying off the whole amount yeah you're, okay you're, good. you're building credit that way plus you're getting the perks of the I always the, wondered why he told card. me that because it didn't make sense to me if like why not just use it and then pay it off right away yeah. you know isn't that the same? Um, what's your credit score at? If you don't, is 780, that, okay. 790, something like that. It's, it dropped because we just got a car from my sister. So I was okay. the I was the main signer on her car. She was the co-signer. She, her credit was terrible. So okay. I, I had to. Do you trust co-sign. her? I have to trust his family. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. You're and so like, family oriented. I wouldn't, I wouldn't trust anybody. Being Armenian, you're, 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 you're kind of forced to. But yeah. like growing up, my dad did it with his family and it ended up being sour. So hopefully yeah. she doesn't screw me over. But I, I, I trust her. I yeah, trust her. that's good. Because it's just like, they obviously can't get their own car for a reason. Yeah. Unless they're like young or something. But um, it's just like scary. Because then scary. it's like, then it becomes personal and it's like. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we have two cars, we have a mortgage and like, yeah, I'm like, if she d- doesn't pay, like, I'm going to end up paying for it. But are, <laughs> are you guys almost done paying off your house? No, no, no. I don't know. It's our I'm naive. third year in, so okay. we have 27 more years to go. I thought you guys were balling. <laughs> that's why not, that's why not. <laughs> balling on a budget. What, okay, what was your down payment for the house? We had help from our parents. Okay. Um, it was 20%. So okay. to avoid paying PMI and all the excess fees, 20, 20%. That, that was their like wedding gift to us. Instead okay. of doing a big wedding, okay. we put it down in the house instead. Do you remember how much the number was? It was like 110, 115,000. Okay. We had a bunch of money saved up. They, nice. I think it was like 45, 40,000. Okay. They gave us. Okay. Yeah. Nice. But without that hope, we wouldn't be able to afford a house, especially in LA. Yeah, the reason I ask is because a lot of people that get houses, like, they don't admit that, one, their parents helped them, Mm -hmm. or two, like, they're just, like, they inherited things. I don't know, you know? They just kind of try to make it seem like, oh, I worked so hard for this. It's so crazy. I hate people that do that. Yeah, especially with with social media, too. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, oh, I did this on my own. Like, like, did you really do it on your own? Like, who helped you? Yeah. How did you figure it out? I hate those influencers that are like, it's easy. Just like do this. Just like stop buying coffee and you'll buy your house in no yeah. time. Yeah. It's bananas to me. Yeah. Um, so what are some tips you have for like building your credit score? A lot of people need to work on that. Don't spend on stuff that you don't need. Since simplest thing. Don't use credit cards on, on everything. Uh, pay them off monthly. Don't let that credit like r- Revolve, especially nowadays at 25, 30, 30% APR. So you're paying. What does that mean? What's APR? Like it's, it's basically the, the percent they, they charge on interest each month. Mm-hmm. So let's say if you owe a hundred bucks, you owe 125 bucks because of the interest. Okay. So the more the money's in there, the more it's compounding, the more you're paying the interest. But we, we try and avoid the credit cards at all costs because it's, it's a trap. Oh, because they, they, they want you to, to keep spending. Get in debt. Yeah. The yeah. whole system is set up that way. Yeah. Mortgage is a debt. Car loan, that's a debt. Student loan, that's a debt. Credit cards, everything is set. So you're paying more and then instead of receiving right. more interest. I think that's because of like our economy and our like capitalistic, uh, like how our countries run, right? It's like meant for to always be like, consumers and yeah. like to always be paying and to be in debt that and lack of education 
Yeah. Because the poor and middle class are usually ones in credit card debt. The rich don't really have credit card debt. Yeah. The rich use credit cards to get the perks of the the points of of the travel awards, all that stuff, and they pay it off every month. Mm -hmm. But the poor middle class use it as, hey, like, um, I can't afford this at the end of the month. I'm going to put it on my credit card. And it just piles up and they never get to it and just gets to the point where they have to either go bankrupt or they have to get more credit cards to compensate for the lack of money. Yeah. What are some items that you think are unnecessary for people to be purchasing? Nice cars. Yeah. Jewelry that they can afford. Would you recommend like used cars? Or depending, I guess? Depending on the person. Yeah. Yeah. Just get a a reliable car that's going to get you from point A to to point B. Yeah. I like flashy cars. So like I I like to stand. I know. I saw your Audi. I was like, wow. Yeah. That's that's one thing that I like to, to spend money on. Like Your car? Yeah. Yeah. After you're saying don't spend money on your car, yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, like, like no. It's, if you could afford yeah, it, it's, by it's all gotta means, make sense. like it's gotta make sense. Yeah. But if you're breaking the bank just to pay your car note, that's that doesn't make sense. You're working backwards, right? Yeah, don't keep yourself in debt. Yeah, exactly. Um, but and then you said you said jewelry, jewelry. Yeah, that's another big thing. Yeah, that it doesn't really do anything to you. Yeah, like, yeah, it has some gold value or some like diamond value, but like. What is it really doing for you? But like spending like luxury goods, like bags, yeah, fashion, shoes, like that. It shouldn't, you shouldn't be spending your money on those things. Yeah. Put that money in the area where it's going to grow. Because right. that's going to de- depreciate over time. You're losing money. That's, that's a liability. It's not an asset. True. True. Um, And then I think like a lot of people like to spend a lot of money on food too. Yeah, That's Postmates. Thing. Yeah, all that like stuff. delivery yeah. fees and stuff. All that stuff adds up. So one of the services that we do is a complimentary like financial needs analysis. So we sit down with them and see where the money is going. Okay. And most of the people's money is going to food and like like drinks and like bars and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, that's a waste. Do you do like a spreadsheet or something or you just like we sit do down with do them. It? So pr- pretty much we see we ask what their goals are. If mm-hmm. they have no goal, we try and create a goal for them. like, oh, when do you want to retire? Do you want to put your kids through college? So we have something that they, they're looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Then we see what they're currently doing. Do they have a 401k? Do they have a savings? Are they putting money away? If not, we try and budget it. So if they're spending too much on, let's say, Netflix or like other things, we try and make sure that they're putting, they're canceling that and putting money where it's going to grow for them. Right. So that's the first thing that we do. Yeah. Like, so do you advise them on like expenses and stuff? For that, sure. Like, okay, you don't need this or like yep. things like that. Yeah. What so, are some things that you found? Um, subscriptions that they don't use. Yeah. Um, double subscriptions. Like so oh, if man. it's a husband and wife, they both have an Amazon. Like why? <laughs> that that doesn't, doesn't, doesn't make sense. Or um, excess going out. Those are the little things that you could literally like, sp- spend less of and use that money to buy assets instead. Do you guys, um, well, do you, well, both of you, do you guys think that making food, I mean, especially with like the cost of groceries and everything, do you think that like making food at home is still cheaper than buying out? Depends. Are you going to eat the food? (laughs) (laughs) What do you mean? Because we meal prep and we eat it for like the first day or two, but then we stop eating it like the (laughs) the third or fourth day. So like we spend more on not eating the food. Okay. Because I I like to I like a you like different, different yeah okay. I like to enjoy my food I don't like to just eat the same thing over and over again. <laughs> um, but yeah. no, but no. If if you buy in bulk and like you prepare like a decent meal with it, for sure it's cheaper. And you're like consistent. I just or like you're I don't know like you're strong minded I guess and you're just like you have that willpower to keep yeah. eating the same food. Yeah. If you're meal prepping, like we eat out every Friday. Okay. But that's that's our like cheat day. That's but nice. during the week we try to do our the best and eating from from the house. Eating at home. Yeah. Yeah, cuz me it's just me and my boyfriend we live together and he he buys like the food and like like when we go out to eat and stuff, he pays for it. And I mean, I help him like with like overseeing his like finances and expenses and stuff, and I'm just like, you know, I can't tell if you're spending more money when we eat out or when you buy groceries. Yeah. It's so wild to me. Just because of the cost of everything yeah. is just yeah. going up. It's crazy. So sometimes it feels like more worth it to just eat out. I Yeah. <laughs> right? For sure. Yeah. Like depending obviously where you're eating at. Yeah. Yeah. 
But Postmates, that's that's just the extra charges. If you're going to go out there and actually get it, bring it home. Get your that, ass up. That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was, okay, what did you learn being in in college? Like, for like, what was one of the things you learned in, with money? Honestly, nothing about money. What? Yeah. They, they don't teach you anything about money. They they teach you to be a consumer rather than be an, an, an investor. I learned most of my money habits outside of okay. college. College. Outside of college. So looking back on college, I should have networked more. I, I, I should have put myself out there more. I'm naturally like introverted. Me too. So that's the thing I kind of regret in Me college. Too. I should have been more outgoing and more like made friends. But like in terms of money, I didn't learn anything. I took business classes like they they taught the the theory of money, but they didn't teach you tangible things to use in your day to day life. Okay, that's where we come in and like we mentor you on like where to put your money, how to budget, how to stay disciplined and not spend above your means. Yeah, how do you recommend people stay disciplined? Like, what's a some people like you know some people have like things like oh I'll put my money in a shoebox and like I can't touch it or something yeah. like. Do you have tips? Mentally, that's that's just, just mental? stay m- mentally strong. Everything is mental. If you if you think about it long enough and you just do it, you're you're gonna. It's gonna be hard the first couple months, but then if if you make it a habit, a routine, it gets easier. How did you like do it? What was your? Because like for me, my thing was like, okay, I'm gonna put half of my check into my savings every month, and like I'm just gonna keep accumulating it. I wrote down all my expenses and all the things and how much I usually get paid and like an average. And then I, I set that goal. So that means like at the end of the year, it should add up to like a certain amount. Yeah. Um, what did you, what did you do? So the first thing I did was I, so my job at the time was matching 3% of my 401k. That's the first thing I did. So match the 3%. That's free, free money right there. Mm -hmm. Then I pay myself first. So every time I, I get, I, I, I got paid, I would put at least 10% of it in my savings account. Okay. After that, I would invest in things. I would put it in, let's say, an, in the, an index fund. And an, an index fund is like a stock, but you're you're buying the whole stock market. You're not buying just a single stock. So you're, you're, you're betting that the whole market is going to do well. Okay. So it's, it's riskier if you just buy one stock because it's going to go up and down. But with if you buy the, the S&P 500, you're buying the whole U.S. economy. How do you even do that? Like, it's, can you it's do called, that on Robinhood? Or? You can, yeah. Okay. It's called e- ETF, Exchange Traded Funds. Okay. There's a, a, a fund called VOO, VU. Vanguard is, is their fund, but it tracks the, the S&P 500. Okay. The S&P 500 is like the 500 biggest consumer companies in the whole U.S. Okay. So if they're doing well, you're doing well. If they're doing bad, you're doing bad. But the chances of all of them doing bad is very Not likely. rare. Exactly. Okay. So it, the gains aren't as robust as the, let's say if you were to buy Apple when it first came out, but like you're guaranteed eight to twelve percent gains each each year. Okay. How much did you, I mean? If you don't mind me asking, like how much did you invest in that? So the first thing I did was max out my Roth IRA. How did you do that? Just put money aside. Just put ten percent of everything that I own, uh, uh, every pay, every check that I got, ten ten percent of it I would put aside into your Roth. Yeah. Okay. Can you explain what a Roth IRA is? Roth IRA is a individual re- retirement account, which allows you to put up to seven thousand dollars per year, and you can take it out in retirement tax tax free. That's the only tax free vehicle, other than life insurance, that you can invest in and pull out money in retirement without paying taxes on it. There is a regular IRA, which is similar, but you, you're you putting in taxable funds. Then when you retire, you take it out and you pay tax on it then. Right. So it's deferred. But the Roth IRA is the only fund other than life insurance where you could put money in then take it out tax-free. But they cap it on how much you could put in each year and how much, if you, if you make too much money, you're not allowed to invest in a Roth IRA. Okay. Wait, so... You said Roth IRA and then life insurance. They, well, can you repeat that? So life insurance has a, so whole life insurance or an IOL and index universal life has a savings component in it where you could invest your money into it and it'll grow tax free. Okay. So a portion of your premiums will go to the life insurance cost. The rest of it will go to actually the investment portion of it. Okay. So it'll grow over time. It'll compound. 
So when you retire, you could take it out as a loan tax free. Okay. That's the only, those are the only two vehicles where you could put in money, then take it out without paying tax on it. You said you maxed out your Roth. What does that mean? So they they cap you on how much you could invest per per year. Per year. Since it's it's a it's a great savings vehicle, they don't want you to overfund Ma- okay, it. Okay, you know? got it. So they cap you at how much you could put in. Okay. This year it's seven thousand. Okay, so if you put seven thousand, and wait, I, it, all of it's still confusing to me. I'm gonna listen back to this and be like, oh, that makes sense. Um, okay, so you could take money out of your Roth. You or not until you retire. You you can't. So you can technically, but you pay a, a, a fee, fee. It, like a penalty. Okay. Yeah. And then you could take money out of your life insurance. Yes. How does your life insurance work? So. Or how the, does life insurance work at, at so all? There's two policies. First one is a term policy. Think of it as renting. Okay. So there is a 10 year, 15 year, 20 year, 30 year term. You pay into it, let's say 30 years after the 30th year, it's gone. So if you don't pass away in those 30 years, you're recovered as a, uh, essentially, but you don't have coverage after the 30, 30th year and one day. Then there's whole life. Whole life is permanent coverage. Um, with whole life, there is a portion. So every month that you pay in, into it, a portion of it goes to the cost of insurance. The rest of it will go to the actual interest earning savings component of that vehicle. So let's say you're putting 300 bucks, roughly 30, 30% of it goes to the cost of insurance. The rest of it is invested into any, like the S&P 500, and it'll grow over time. Okay. So with the index, with the, with the IUL, with the indexed universal life, you're pretty much investing in the S&P 500 tax-free. So okay. you, you could take it out as a loan and not pay any tax on it because the IRS deems loans as tax, tax, non, non-taxable. Okay, so that kind of actually makes more sense because, like I was telling you earlier, I hear or read about people uh, that are entrepreneurs and they take money out of their life insurance to start their business. Yeah, it's called in- infinite banking. You, okay, you pretty much become your, your your own own personal bank. And then, like, so how do you go about doing all that? You go to a life insurance agency or something. You talk to me or a, a broker or agent, uh-huh. and they set up for you. Okay. But the hardest thing is you have you have to get approved for it. So okay. you, you have to be healthy and like in good health yeah. in order to. <laughs> um, and then so after that, let's say you put a certain amount into it and it's doing really well, and you take the money out, you would still talk to you about it to take the money out. Like how? Would so that- you could either call me or call the company directly, and they'll guide you on how to do it. Okay. They and then either- they'll give you like a loan, right? Yeah. So okay. it's essentially a loan off of your own money. Okay. And the loan's rate is the same rate as the interest that you're earning. So it's like a wash loan. So you're not really paying interest on it. Okay. So at the end of it, you could either pay it off and still have those money, that, that cash growing in it, or not pay it off. And they'll take it off of your, your debt, debt benefit. So depending on, like, if you start a business with, business with that loan, are you able to buy a house with that loan? You could do anything with it. Really? You could, you could okay. buy a house with it, buy a business, whatever you want with it. Okay. So depending on all that, like, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> my peripheral saw you recording and I was like, oh no, Do, am I sounding stupid right now? <laughs> okay. Okay. No, that is cute. It's so cute, but I just got thrown off. Um, okay. What was I saying? The whole concept of life insurance <laughs> is very like taboo. Okay. People don't want don't want to talk about it. Yeah, and the reason also I'm like really trying to make this episode like a little like personable, relatable. Yep. Like I don't really want to edit too much out um, because it's just like people are so scared to talk about money. Yeah. Oh, people yeah. don't feel like if they feel like if they're if they don't have money, they can't relate to talking about money, yep. and yep. that's not true, you know. So, I mean, it's like everyday people that should be learning about money or just like, even if you don't understand like what he's talking about, like you should try to like Google things and look it up because like now you have the terminology to 
watch a YouTube video about it or something, you know? And honestly, no one has it all figured out. Yeah. We see people who <laughs> make $2 million a year, they're living paycheck to paycheck. Like, their expenses are all out of whack. They're paying right. more on stuff that they don't need, like the, the, the nice car or the mortgage, and they're not able to save anything. Right. So it's not about how much you make, it's how much you, you keep at the end. So, so that's a, a, another thing, taxes. Yeah. We invest in things and we buy things that we, we don't really focus on the, on the tax Im- implications on it. Mm. If you were to buy stocks, you're going to pay capital gain stocks on it. Insurance is the only vehicle where you can put money into it and it'll grow tax-free. The okay. IRS can't touch it. That's the beauty of it. That's why like the the, the, the Rockefellers, like these, like these big, big people invested in it and they had generational wealth. They pass it down to their families without being taxed. That's another important thing is that, um, how old are your parents? 68, 65. Okay. They were on. Yeah. So my parents are like, they're like 57, 56. Um, I feel like that generation wasn't taught about generational wealth or even just like how to use their money. Mm -hmm. So when it came to like things like, I don't know. Like my mom did the best that she could and everything and she tried her best. And I have no, you know, I don't know. I don't have any like any bad thought about like what, how she raised me or anything. But I just feel like there are things that maybe she could have done to help set up my brother and I for like, just like, a easier track on like not being in debt and like like I have a student loan and I, too. I sometimes feel like if she would have just let me claim myself I would have been able to you know get financial aid yeah. and not be in debt and essentially like you know and I know she probably used that money for like good things because yeah. she raised us well but I think like when we think about long-term things, you should be setting up your children for yeah. for generational wealth because in the long run, that's going to make their life easier and they're going to be in less debt yeah. and like they'll have the upper hand to just like keep making more money, yeah. you know, and not be in debt. Yeah. Um, so sometimes like as a parent, I think you need to make those sacrifices. Yeah. So. Were they first generation American? Yeah. Well, I'm first gen. Well, they, yeah. they were born yeah, yeah, yeah. in Mexico, gotcha. but they came to the U.S. as like, my dad came as like a baby and my mom came as like a 10 year old child. Gotcha. So they were kids. Yeah. They were in like survival mode. They were trying to like yeah. make ends meet. They, right. they, they didn't speak a language. Same with my, my parents. They didn't speak a language. Like they were just trying to like survive, make ends meet by any means possible. Yeah. So and like, education is important. Yeah. Cause... And you weren't taught that. You're just, yeah. And coming from a different country, like you can't really trust the American system. Like right. you, you, you trust somebody to, to put your money into a, say a savings vehicle and, and an, an, an investment and True. they end up like fucking you over. Yeah. So like there is that aspect of it too. Like you don't really trust people with your money because you've worked so hard for it. Right. I'd rather put it in a place where I could physically see it and touch it and like, you know, if I need it, I'll go and, go and get it. Yeah. Which right is why so many like immigrants do yep. that like under the mattress yep. shit, you oh, know? Yeah. And it's like... My birth certificate's there. <laughs> like ev- everything's on there. Everything is there. Anything that's Im- important, important is under the mattress. And it's just like, you never know when there's like a fire yep. or like a flood or things like that, yep. you know? And so it's pretty, it's like a risk. Yeah, exactly. That's why you, you, you need some cash at, at, at home. Just right. in case like... Is an, an apocalypse or like <laughs> banks like shut down, like your credit cards don't work anymore. Like you need some sort of cash. So are you able to disclose how much money you have in cash at home? If not, that's nah. fine. Okay. I have a hundred dollars. <laughs> no, we have a good, good chunk. Like okay. I'm, I prepare enough where like I need to have some sort of cash. <laughs> I, I have cash always, always on me. Okay. Cause you never know when you're going to need cash. Yeah. I guess that's true. Um, I don't trust the banks. I, I don't trust the banks at all. Really? Okay. All, I mean, all. I don't, I blindly do, I guess, but I also just don't want to hold on to my money. But I, it's funny because I remember at Enterprise, um, a lot of Armenian men would always, they wouldn't all even cash. ask me. They would just be like, cash, yeah. like cash. Yep. I'm like, no, we don't take cash, man. Yeah, it's that immigrant mindset because like, cash is yeah. taken everywhere. Like, okay. you're like, well, you don't take cash? Like, what the hell? Like, like you <laughs> 
no, bro, I have no cash for this year. It's just debit or credit. I know. Like, we're not trying to get it wrong. It's like I'm giving you a car. Um, I can't trust you with a hundred dollar bill. Like, I'm giving you a vehicle that's like twenty thousand dollars. Like, I can't. Just yeah. Do that. Yeah. Okay. But now, cash is definitely king in in like all immigrant cultures. Right. Because they typically work under the table, like for like untaxable. So like they have already always have cash in, yeah. in hand. And kind of like growing up, that's what I was kind of used to to have cash. Mm-hmm. So I have a good chunk of cash at home. But nice. you need some. You need money in the bank. You need money in like stocks. You need, you need to have a diversified portfolio of where you want to put your money. Mm-hmm. I agree. You don't want to put your your eggs all in one one basket. So what's a good percentage to put into stocks? Depending on how old you are, depending on what your risk tolerance is. But if you're young, let's say like you're our, our age, a good chunk of it, a good like 80% of it should should be in stocks. Okay. Yeah. 80? 80% of it, yeah. Because you have so many years to grow it. Why not maximize that? The yeah. only time you should like divest in from stocks is when you're closer to like retirement age. Okay. That's when you have vehicles like, like an annuity. An annuity never loses money. So you put money into it, it'll grow. But if the market goes down, you don't lose any money on it. So the older you get, you should divest from stocks and put it more into like bonds, safer things where if the market does go down, you don't lose your whole life savings all in one day. What are bonds and how do you purchase a bond? Bonds aren't really common anymore. Okay. Um, It's like state and federal, like they, they, they sell them, but... We how do you usually, how do you purchase it through brokers? Okay, yeah, brokers and and people in the industry do sell them, but the typical person doesn't really buy bonds. You, you could invest in bonds like through and like a like a like a fund where there's bonds in it, okay. but you can't. You, I don't recommend physically buying bonds. Okay, Just but th- it is safer. Sense. It's safer in the sense that it doesn't lose value. Okay, if, in case like the stock market does crash, you have some sort of like asset that's still kind of staying constant it's not losing money okay do you project the stock market to crash anytime soon every four years the stock market does go down okay every 10 years there's one big crash so every, that's that's do you a think it's thing. long overdue yeah right it and is. you you shouldn't see it as as, as a bad thing if okay. if the stock market goes down that's a buying opportunity right you, you have to buy low in order to sell high Okay. So so like think think of it as like stocks are are on sale every time the market crashes. But you don't want to be in retirement age and having the market crash. That's when you lose all your your life savings. Yeah. That's wild. And so what happens what do you do then? Cry. <laughs> so if you put 80% and the stock market crashes, you lose a good chunk of it, yeah. Okay, but you should be having um, a different savings as well. So the the closer you get to retirement, your financial educator person should tell you, hey, like you're getting close to retirement age, start putting money, moving your, your money from one vehicle to the next vehicle. Okay. Yeah. Um, can you explain what a high yield savings account is? Because I try to tell people to do that and they don't listen to me. <laughs> it's basically like putting your money in a bank where it grows a little bit faster than it would at a regular bank. Okay. The regular bank gives you less than 1% interest. These smaller banks, since they want, so they just want your money. Yeah. So they're giving you more interest on your money than a regular big bank. Let's say like Bank of America, Chase, Wells Fargo would give you. So like yeah. SoFi, um, there's the other smaller banks who offer a higher yield right. to get more of your business. But that always fluctuates. Yeah. That's based off of the current interest rate. So if the interest rates are, are high, they're able to offer you more interest. But when, when rates go low, they go back to like that 1%, 2%. But it'll never go down to like a big bank, right? Because the big banks are like, like I get in like, I have different bank accounts. And then the big bank, it'll give me like, Pennies. 15 cents yeah, pennies they um, will never offer it because they have so much business they have so much money coming in they don't they it's not and they don't need it, to yeah it, it, it doesn't make sense for them to off, offer that more yeah. so like smaller online banks will yeah. offer more because also i read that they don't have like the front costs of like actual like yeah. uh like brick and whatever. mortar stores yeah, they don't have like atms <laughs> they they use shared atms so yeah. they don't physically have a lot of atms but yeah like bigger banks they have it's easier access to access yeah. your 
your money. With, 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 with SoFi and stuff, you have to find out where the nearest ATM is. To right. So it's like inconvenient. Money. A little bit, yeah. The the easier it is to pull your, your money out, the less likely they're going to offer you higher yield. Right. The harder it is for you to take your money out, the more they're going to pay you. The more money, interest you'll yeah, get. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Do you have a high yield savings account? Uh, she does. She I, does. I do not. Okay. Yeah. Is there a reason why you don't? It, it's it's, it's shared, yeah. But like she's just in charge of I, it. I I like to have <laughs> access of my money, like from a bank. You know, like I I like access. I that's that that, that trauma from like growing up. Like yeah. I need that money now. Like you want to see where your hard work yeah is yeah <laughs> exactly exactly. Um, what was, do you have any other notes? I, I'm just trying to think off the top of my head things that are like important for me. Um, have an emergency fund. Uh, okay. have some cash at home. Um, put money in a bank. Put money in the bank where you need it, like for if it's like a one month to three month time period, leave it in the bank. Okay. If it's gonna be more long term, put it in like stocks, brokerage accounts, Roth IRAs, where you don't need it immediately. Put it in a long term account, but make sure you have a diversified portfolio. Okay. Don't put your money in like crypto and stuff. You don't really know about it, you know. Speaking of crypto. <laughs> so what do you know about crypto are you have you invested in crypto i like just buy bitcoin and ether those are the two okay. things that i mess with i don't mess with anything else those how, how much coins, ethereum do you have a few thousand dollars a few thousand three or four thousand dollars no like how much like coins it's like a portion of ether it's not even one oh ether. no yeah okay i bought when it was super high damn that sucks but i don't <laughs> dabble in crypto too much i stick to like like assets that i have a <laughs> historical yeah. timeline of doing well. Okay. But I think eventually crypto is going to be I the think future. so too. It has to be. I think so too. I have a lot of faith in Ethereum. I don't know about Bitcoin because I was a little too late into Bitcoin. Yeah, Ether is Ether's legit. Um, Ether is like the logic behind Ether makes sense to me. It does to me too. And I don't understand all of it, but the base of it, yeah, like the, the I'm ledger, just like, that makes sense connected. to me. Yeah. Yep. Do you have any apps or things where you buy stocks and stuff? I use um, E-Trade on e my brokerage account, yeah. But most of my stuff is in uh, life insurance. Okay, life yeah. insurance. Yeah. And so, how much do you pay in life insurance? She's paying three fifty. I'm doing about the same. A month? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a, a portion of it will, will, will go to the actual insurance side of it. The rest of it goes to the actual allocation of funds growing over time. Okay. And... Yeah. And then do you guys plan to take out of that life insurance? Um, like, hopefully not. Okay. That's not the, the plan is to let it ride and use it in retirement. Okay. Because the longer right. you let it sit, the more it compounds, the more it grows. Do you guys have a 401k? I had it with enterprise. Right. I rolled it over into an, an, an annuity. Nice. What yeah. does that mean? So and and so an annuity is like a retirement vehicle, but it's your own personal retirement vehicle. So oh. in a 401k, the money still fluctuates. It goes uh, uh, up and down. Mm -hmm. in a, and that's with your employer. Exactly. Right? So once you get like let go or, or you, you you leave, you have access to your account. Okay. So you can either leave it with them and you'll do the same thing as doing, go up and down based on how the market does. Uh -huh. Or you can put it into an, an index annuity. Annuity is like a 401k, but you have access to it and you dictate where the funds go to. So when you left Enterprise... They told you about all that, or how did you know to do that? I learned it here. Okay. Uh, the more I learned about finance, the more I learned about money. I figured out that annuities is a hidden secret that nobody knows about. Okay. So what I did was I had seventy thousand in the four hundred one k. I nice. rolled it over into an annuity, which would never lose money ever. Okay. So it would just gain. Yeah. Okay. So if the market goes down, I lose zero. Okay. That's that's, that's that sick. that's the floor it's at. Cool. So if like there's three, four years of market going at zero, you don't lose any money. Okay. But if there's gains, you lock in those gains. Nice. And it compounds over time. So there's just like no risk. Same thing with the life insurance. It's okay. an indexed a new it's an indexed vehicle. So if the market goes down, you never lose the money. It just keeps going up once the market's back up again. Okay. Um who are you banking with? Does that even matter? Like who you're banking with? Not really. No? As long as it's not like like a small little mom pop bank. Okay. I'm B of A. She's think Chase, I think, no? Do you guys have credit unions or anything? Not really, no. I don't... I had a credit union, but there is no like need for it, honestly. There's no benefit for yeah. it? Okay. Um, 
So how does it work when, I don't know if you know this, you're not like a banker, right? No. Like, <laughs> um, but like when you, so you might not answer, but like, let's say you want to take a, um, a refinance, like your student loan or something. Like, how would you do that? I have no idea. Okay. I'm going to cut that out. I've, I've been <laughs> deferring for a long while. Okay. Have you? Yeah. So you have a loan too? For sure. Damn, yeah. how much is your debt? Five thousand. Okay. Yeah, my, my, my last year they didn't cover. And you just don't want to pay it? I don't want to pay it, no. <laughs> I don't want to pay it at all. I'm hoping Biden figures out right? a way to Right? Fuck Biden. Wash it. Piece like of that, shit. But... Were you happy when they were like, everyone's going to get $10,000 off? You didn't believe it? I didn't believe it at all. Okay. He's the reason why we're in this inflation mess right now. I think uh, all that money. Let's not talk about politics. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not that I'm like pro Biden because I'm absolutely not, but yeah, no. I don't know. I feel like there's just a lot of fucked up shit going yeah. on in politics. It's a mess. It's a mess. Yeah, totally. Yeah. We're in a shithole that we have to find a way to get, get out of. Are you optimistic that we can get out of it? I kind of have to be. Okay, me too. Yeah. It's yeah. like fake optimism. Yeah. I'm just like hopeful. What the market's doing and what's actually happening in real life is totally different. It used to be where the market dictates what is actually going on in society. Now right. it's like so far off. Because the market's doing extremely well, but then you look at the job market, no one has a job. Everyone's if, in debt, yeah. everyone's broke. Or if they have a job, a they have multiple jobs and not making enough to live. Right. So the, the numbers are kind of not telling the, the full story. Yeah. This is where like numbers kind of lie. I agree. The, the, the numbers make sense, but like if you look at the actuality of like, at least LA, right. people are struggling to make ends meet. I agree. And I think like, I think statistics and numbers only go so far. Yeah. It only grabs like a portion of what that reality is. Exactly. And in reality, a lot of people from their actual experience are experiencing the same thing and they're seeing the same thing. Mm -hmm. So that has to be true. And yeah. these numbers can't be like, you know, telling the truth. Yeah. So I know that sounds dumb, but like, it's just like you hear it from everybody, like everything's going up. Yeah. All these corporations are making so much money. They're making like killings every year annually. They're just like exceeding from last year. Yeah. But yet like the minimum wage is like still fucking low. Like yeah. I think it should have gradually went up um, over time and it didn't. And so now it's like barely going up. Yeah. Um, and then just like everything's like a mess with like the way actually people are living and like everyone can't find a house and yep. like everything's just so expensive and it doesn't make sense. Everything's like out of reach. Like you could see it, but like you can't really like touch and grab yeah. it type of thing. Yeah. And then it's just like there's no caps to any of the corporations either. So they just kind of like keep winning and the people keep losing. They're making up for all the losses that they had during COVID. I I feel like. Yeah. Since everything was in a standstill, but I don't know. Anyway, did this go by really fast? It flew by, yeah. It's already at like 54 minutes. That's so cool. do you have like a closing out of anything you want to say? Any advice? What should I say? Um, with our, with our like company we have a unique um unique advantage where we could bring people on as team members too so let's say you want to make passive income and you don't know how to mm -hmm. we teach you these skills how to educate people on how money works and you could spread this and build a team around yourself and you could join our team and make passive income on the side okay so that's one unique thing like we provide like mentorship leadership guidance is that like how much does that cost um so it's 125 to start off, but you learn. So we have Tuesdays and Saturday courses. Tuesday is more of like the, the business side. Saturday is more of like the policies that we do, how we help people like actually. Mm -hmm. But the more, most of the stuff we, we learn is like mindset shifts. Mindset, you think changing your, your mindset on like have not to more like I, I can do this. Right. Because coming from an employee to owning your own business, like that's, that's so difficult. It was so difficult for, for me to, to grasp. Transition. Cause, yeah, yeah. Cause no one was telling me like, Oh, you have to do this. You have to do that. I was building my own schedule. I was doing things on my own time. And like, I wasn't being too efficient. So my mentors taught me how to like think in a positive light to not have that limited mindset where, Hey, I can't do this or I'm introverted. I'm shy. I can't do this. Yeah. Like, if you ask me to do this like a year and a half ago, I'm like, yeah, no, you're, you're crazy. I, I, 
I can't speak in front of people. I, I, I can't do a podcast. Same. But I agree. It's like <laughs> that mental shift of like, I can do this. I'm capable of doing this. And there is a saying, there's a quote by Ed Milet. You're most qualified to help the person you once were. Right. So if you come back, you if you come from a poor family who you didn't know how money works and now you know, yeah. you could help somebody like yourself who's kind of in that. Yeah. In that just state of mind. Right. I agree. That's that's kind of ultimately what like I don't know what I'm gonna do with this podcast, but or I don't know what I'm gonna do like long term with yeah. my career. Yeah. Um, but I do want to help people that have similar experiences to me yeah. because my life has not been fucking easy at all. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. And you know, I just feel like there's a lot of people that they don't they keep secrets from people cause they want to make it look like their life's easy or yeah. their life's like nice and everything. No. And it's like, why would you want to do that? <laughs> why would you want to lie to everybody like about how hard you worked to like get to a certain point, you know, yeah. like, I don't know. No, I've, I've been through so much trauma and like so much shit growing up. Like, like it's built the person I am today. Like, yeah. I needed to go through those hardships to be the person I am today. Yeah. So that's, the, the trauma, the hardship, that that journey is all worth it. And, like, I post stuff on, like, on Instagram to help me out yeah. with that kind of stuff. Because, like, I need that daily reminder. Hey, like, don't look forward. Look back and see where you've come. You know what? That's honestly, I'm a, I'm a person that's, like, all about, like, signs and things like that. I'm not all, like, wacky. But, like, I do believe in signs. And I think I needed to hear that today, even though I've heard that so many times and throughout my life, you know, like, yeah. don't look back, look forward. It's such a common thing that people say, yeah. but I needed to hear it today. So I'm yeah. glad you said that. It's good to to look back sometimes to see where you've, where you've come. Like, right. hey, like I was that shitty person. Now I'm like, I'm more educated. I'm more aware of what I'm doing. I'm more in tune with myself. Right. And I think that's that human experience, like getting to know yourself. True. That's that journey of life. I agree. It's to give life a meaning. It's not to find meaning. It's like you, you have to give it a meaning. You have to find purpose in like the little nuances, the little journeys, the little setbacks. Yeah. And like in this business, like I learned that the hard way. Is I stutter. Like I, I'm introverted. Like I don't like people at all. So it's it's <laughs> it's forced me to communicate better. It's forced me to connect with people on a different level. Do you and think like, you don't like people? Because of how introverted you are? Is that, I, like, how does that... I think, so, I'm introverted, but then I stutter, so my stutter made me more introverted, so it's like a, like, a, it's snowball. Like a cycle, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Growing up, like, I would never, like, I was just on my own, like, you know, I had fun alone. Okay. Type of thing. Yeah. I had friends and all, but, like, I enjoyed my alone time. Okay. I love to read, I love to listen, like, listen to music and stuff, and, like, podcasts. But, like, I like to be more introverted, more in tune with myself. Yeah. I agree. I'm, like, the same way. And, like, I think I have an introverted, extroverted personality. Yeah. And most of me is introverted. Um, and I think, like, I've struggled with, like, social anxiety a For lot. Sure, yeah. I've struggled with also my speech. Just, like, a lot of words I, I can't articulate too well. Or, like, sometimes, like, my brain is, like, processing too slow. Yeah. yeah. And even though I... I think I know what I want to say. Like it doesn't necessarily come out. So I've struggled with communicating a lot. Yep. Um, and I think like this podcast helps and in, in some way to help me grow too. For sure. Yeah. And I would hope that it helps other people grow too. Cause it, it takes a lot of courage to like get on the mic and start talking about yourself 100%. and then looking at yourself and 100%. just like being like, Oh shit, this is me. Um, but, uh, you know, you get to look back on it and be yeah. like, that's where I was and I did it. And it was like, you overcame a challenge that maybe you didn't think you were ever going to do. Yeah. And now you're here. You should face your fears a lot more often. Yeah. You should run it's towards scary. That, that, that thing that you're scared of. It's scary, but like there's so much adrenaline. And then when it's over, you're like, I did it. Yeah. Think of like the... Your body acts nervous, right? You're, you're kind of sweaty, like you're nervous, yeah. your mind's everywhere. But like, that's the same thing of being excited. Yeah. Your mind just says, oh, you're, you're, you're nervous. But if you shift your mindset, hey, I'm excited instead. That's that little like sh brain shift. Like, hey, like I should be more happy-go-lucky, more excited about things instead of like being more like, hey. I Cranky yeah, exactly, and like grumpy exactly. about shit and yep. negative. Exactly. 
Yeah, I agree. Um, okay, so if w- did you did we already go over your advice? Do you have advice? If you don't, um, it's fine. Pay off debt, <laughs> have an emergency fund, put some money in the bank just in case for an, an emergency. Get some sort of life insurance if you can't afford whole life. You get term. Have some coverage. That's the foundation of your financial freedom. Um, if you have a 401k, match whatever your employer is matching. Don't overfund it. There's no point. Um, dabble with stocks. If you want to put some money in crypto, but I don't really recommend it, but focus on having a savings account, having an emergency fund, having life insurance, and having some sort of stocks. That's my advice. Buy assets instead of liabilities. Okay. Buy things that grow over time instead of lose value o- over time. Yeah. What what stocks do you recommend to start with? Index funds. So if I go on Robinhood, what would I type in? VOO. VOO. Yeah. Okay, you said that earlier. So yeah. that's there's VOO, there's SPY, SPI, SPY. So okay. There's different funds that essentially do, do the same thing. And then how much would I spend on it? You, um, I think it's like three seventy right now per stock. Okay. With Robinhood, it allows you to buy portions of a stock, so you could buy however money, how much, however much, much you have. Invest, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But if you go on like E Trade and stuff, you would have to get like the three seventy for example. Yeah, you have to get a, a full singles. Okay. Single stock. Okay. Um, and then where can we find you? Do you have like a YouTube channel or anything? Um, I have an gonna Instagram. Start no, definitely not YouTube, but <laughs> YouTube's I'm crazy. All over Instagram. It's okay. the art and wealth. We'll tag it or something. Yeah, I'm gonna tag it for sure. I post like super like motivational, inspirational stuff, like stuff that I need on on a daily basis. So if it helps me, I'm pretty sure it's gonna help you you guys out too. And it's like not all about money, it's all, all about like mindset shifts. Um, positive self-talk. Yeah. It's like motivational stuff to get you through the day. Yeah, for sure. I know. Don't like, don't be so hard on yourself, even yeah. though like yeah. I'm my own worst enemy. Cause I say like the meanest shit to myself, Yeah, but don't be so hard on yourself. And don't afraid to, <laughs> to start something. Yeah. Just take, take that risk. I have friends and family and stuff who take me saying, Oh, I like your post. I'm like, I, I didn't see you like it, but you're, you're telling me you like it. But like the whole, the whole purpose of it is to, for you to like it and share it. Yeah. So more people can see it, but like, but you know what? Support e- your even, friends. even like a text. Yeah. I feel like that still matters. For Cause sure. at least you're getting texts. I have friends that like won't do shit. You know, that's, it irritates me. Yeah. There's that haters in my it's life. Like, that means you're doing something good. <laughs> that means something good. <laughs> that's probably true. Yeah. And it's all about like consistency. Yeah. So even though if you're alone, like you just keep doing your shit, eventually you'll get exactly. there. I'm like surprised that, my podcast, my podcast has grown and it's like a little bit by li- like little bit. And it's like, okay, well, it's not going backward. Yeah. So like, that's a good thing. The universe will give you anything that you're ready for. Okay. So if, if you're ready for like that big jump, you got to do some big things. You have to get out of your, your comfort zone. Probably. Because it gets hard, but then it gets easier. So you have to challenge yourself again. I don't know if I'm ready for that big jump, honestly. I think you are. I'm, like, chill with just, like, doing this and, like, keeping it. Although I know there's, like, marketing things that I should be doing. I don't feel like it because I hate, hate like, social media stuff. And staying consistent. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Would you do this again? For sure, yeah. Yeah? was Was it not so bad? It was actually... I enjoyed it. Okay, I, cool. I like these these like meaningful talks. It's, it's, Me too. It's very like I it feels it feeds my soul. You know, like it makes me. I feel agree. Alive. I agree because it's like when one on one conversations happen. I feel like you're like your mind gets to process things more, and exactly. like you get to like kind of say more what's on your mind. So, exactly. all right, we'll close out here. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you.